Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today, I'm gonna to be putting this microwave inside of my vacuum chamber. Let's see if we can pop some popcorn. All right, let's see. <laughs> oh no, it doesn't fit. At least not sideways. All right, so there it is, inside the chamber. I can even uh, open up the door just like that. And it looks like enough space that I can put a bag of popcorn in. Now all I need is something to push this button remotely. I uh, think maybe a solenoid would you know, do pretty well, because I, I can use electricity in there. All right, so I've built me a solenoid. It's just a coil of wire, a piece of metal, and a wooden rod to actually push the button. So when I touch this to a DC power source, you can see it turns the microwave on. Just like that. I can turn it back off the same way. Okay, the microwave's on, popcorn's cooking. So there's the popcorn cooked. Let's open it up, take it out. And as you can see, I've just got a bag of ordinary microwave popcorn. So I'm gonna set this aside for later comparison. Now let's set it up and uh, see if this will all work in a vacuum. I'm actually rather worried about the microwave because this thing does generate a lot of heat and if it doesn't have a way to dissipate it, it could burn up. So this ought to be interesting. So it's a little while later, you can see that it's gotten dark on me, but uh, the vacuum level is now right about 25 inches of mercury relative pressure. Uh, the absolute pressure on the gauge inside the tank looks like 30 millimeters of mercury. So that means I've removed at least 95% of the air. I'm usually able to do better than that. Uh, maybe the gauge is tipped sideways a little bit and that's making the number a little off. Or just the fact that you know I had to put this together on its side made me... I've got a leak somewhere. Anyway, let's turn the uh, microwave on and see what happens. Let's actually turn the pump off first so that I don't uh, blow a fuse. In three, two, one. It's on. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, let's see that now that I've repressurized it, whether or not the microwave can run. So let's reset this. Uh, Set it for 10 seconds. I'm going to start it the same way I did. You know, maybe the light here is throwing me over. So let's let's see if this still works. Microwave's on. Doesn't seem to be tripping out this time. Oh yeah, it just finished. You know, that tells me that running the microwave in the vacuum must draw more power somehow. That's interesting. Well, obviously this means I need to hook it up to a heavier duty circuit. <laughs> this plug here is the original one that I was using. This is hooked up to the GFCI plug in the kitchen, which I was using because, you know, I didn't really want to get electrocuted the other day. Three, two, one. But this one is running the pump, the lights, and the computer. This one here I'm running up from the laundry room. So the circuit is a little bit larger and is completely separate from the pump and the lights. So let's see if the uh, microwave will run now. In three, two, one. Okay, it's on. So far so good. I think I see smoke though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's smoke. Something died. I'm actually gonna shut the pump off. <laughs> I 
I think I killed the microwave, guys. It did not like that. The pressure increased a little bit. I think it did. <laughs> so there you go. Microwave ovens can't handle a vacuum. Now, it wasn't a perfect vacuum. This wasn't even as good as what you would have on Mars. It was only 95% of the air removed, but obviously that was enough to kill it. A little bit stuck there. You see, I put some more silicone on there to try to seal it. There's definitely smoke. And it smells like burnt rubber. So my guess is the thing's dead, but uh, I'm going to try resetting it and see if I can get it to go anyway. Yeah, it's unresponsive. <laughs> That's a dead microwave. Well, let's pull it out of there. Alright, so we got it out of the chamber. Let's see what went wrong. First of all, let's open it up. <laughs> How do I manage that? There's two bags of popcorn in there. Uh, you see what happened is I, I wanted to start with a fresh bag of popcorn for the second test. You know, just to minimize the variables. I must have forgot to take the old one out. <laughs> oh well. Uh, the microwave didn't run, so it didn't make a difference anyway. So there's there's no smoke in here, so the fire didn't enter the actual cooking chamber. It's interesting. All right. Well, I'm just going to dig in and see exactly what happened. Well, I think that's your problem right there. So I'm sure there's those of you out there who know way more about this than I do, and perhaps uh, someone even knows exactly what happened here, but uh, I'm just telling you what I can see, and the coil on the transformer has been burned up. It almost looks like an arc danced around on there and caused everything to short out. In fact, I wonder if it blew the fuse. Let's check on that. Yeah, the fuse is blown. So it definitely arced out and started drawing way too much power. And uh, that fuse blowing is probably what ultimately stopped the device. Gotta admit, I'm not entirely sure what would actually cause that. Obviously being in the low pressure environment is what ultimately did it, but maybe it made it so that arcs could jump over larger gaps and get shorted out from this wire here. But man, that, that totally fried that transformer. But other than that, everything else looks pretty much okay. Uh, the fans got a little bit of burnt, but otherwise I think it is still run. Magnetron, everything looks okay. The beepers, unfortunately, are just fine. <laughs> yeah, so this microwave is ultimately fine except for the transformer. I have to say, I was not expecting this thing to die so quickly. I thought maybe since the fan couldn't blow air around, it would overheat, and you know maybe I could potentially get a bag of popcorn popped with it, but this only lasted a few seconds before it died. So anyway, I have been wanting to look at electrical discharges in a near vacuum environment, and I guess this gives me an excuse to do it. How far an arc can jump in a near vacuum Maybe because it can jump farther, perhaps, is why this had this happen to it. Well, I'm definitely going to look into this some more. Until then, I'll see you next time. <laughs>